Mr. Tim. Hey, Gar. How are you, buddy? Thanks for taking this meeting. Yeah, I'm happy. How are you? I'm doing well, man. Doing well. You got to be happy. You got you got music at your fingertips. Yes. Yeah. That's awesome, man. I love it. Yeah, it's it's fun. It's uh, it's part meditation, part therapy. Yeah. You know, part outlet, distraction, whatever. That's, it's a lot of different things. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, my daughter, we've got her in guitar lessons. And uh, yeah, it's it's so cool to, to listen to her play. And she sings on the worship team at church for youth. And just, yeah. What a How cool. old is she? Uh, 14. That's good. Perfect age. Yeah. Yep. So my my stuff. daughter's in school of rock as well. She's she's playing drums and keyboards. She's eleven. Oh, awesome, man! That's so yeah. cool. Music yeah. is one of my favorite joys in life. Yeah, same, same. That and cold watermelon. And cold watermelon. Oh, yeah, nice. cold watermelon. <laughs> so you would. Uh, we have our street dead ends into a watermelon like processing center. Wow. So I have school buses that are like chopped in half the tops and they just they load, load them watermelons. Up. Yeah. They, they're dry by my house six days a week. That's, uh, and you're in Florida. Yeah. I'm in Okeechobee, the big dot in the middle of Florida. I'm at the right. Northern tip of Lake Okeechobee. Yep. Cool. So, yeah. I spent a little bit of time in Gainesville. Okay. Back in the late 80s. Uh-huh. And then where are you 80s. now? You're in New Jersey? Yeah, I'm in, I'm in South Jersey, yeah, Gloucester County, right outside Philadelphia. Okay. So one That's of the questions to... I... Go ahead. I'm sorry. One of the questions that I asked during the uh, during the seminar that I attended was, was uh, how big of an area, circumference-wise, are your franchises, and are you going to limit it? To... Oh, gotcha. As far as the territories? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. So those are those are kind of goofy because uh, really you're going to have renters coming from all around the world. Uh, you're going to have RVs coming from all around the country because really, you know, the RV owner is going to either bring it to you because they're near or around New Jersey or it just makes the most sense for whatever their type of unit is. Sometimes we find, you know, right, there's this class B and it's in Montana. Well, those actually perform really good in Pennsylvania. So we tell the owner it's their unit. We want to make them money. So they move it to a franchise in Pennsylvania. But as far as like, where would there be another brick and mortar fireside within you? Uh, what we do is we just stick with a standard of 10 miles unless we have something going on with like population. So there's like a population difference that where it would make sense to expand or go smaller. Okay, that makes. I think I googled fireside RV rentals near you, and the closest one that came up was in Maryland, parked in Maryland. Oh so, yeah, that one's that one. Uh, that we don't actually have one in Maryland. That one, the guy started it, and then he started it for his wife, and she thought, "Why would you start this for me? I don't want to do this." <laughs> it was one, it was a COVID a COVID thing. Oh, so it fizzled out. I see. <laughs> so as far as your franchises go, and when you're when you're talking about renting other people's units, other people's RVs, um, your physical plant doesn't have to be acres and acres of fields. Is that to store these no. RVs? No, you don't even have to, if you have property, you can put them on where you can charge them storage. Great. But a lot of our franchises, they operate right out of a storage unit. So they just find a storage unit that works good for them. And that's where they launch. And then the owners pay the storage facility, the, the storage fees. Uh, and then that's where you operate out of. So if you can find one, you know, near you, that works good as far as say, maybe they have like water and power, you know, different things that help you operate out of there easily enough. Um, that works. Yeah. So it's, that's one of the cool things about this business model. It's very, very low overhead. So when you're, I'm trying to get, a, uh, like I have two RVs right now. Uh, okay. 
and that uh, you're renting out or well definitely one is definitely going to be rented rented out it's listed right now on outdoorsy and listed on uh good sam okay RV rentals um but you know i'm trying to wrap my head around how do i expand do i expand where do I go more tow behinds, more drivables, or do I do other people's RVs? And since you're the expert, why not do something partnering with you to figure out if this is even going to be feasible for me? Because I'm already running a couple of businesses. Yeah. So that's good that you're thinking about that as far as you already have businesses going, you know, uh, it's definitely something that you can put people into place and we help you with that. Um, man, we've got a guy who just launched in Tennessee and he was starting to look for a storage facility. He found the storage facility called like man cave storage and they do storage detailing, um, delivery to campground and cleaning. So he literally found his whole staff in one storage unit. Wow. Um, so yeah, I mean, that his, his like, perfect roll of the dice for him um but but yeah so you can definitely staff uh you can definitely put people in place and we have training and tools for all of that you know you don't have to be an owner operator my goal in my heart when i did this was helping people create semi-passive income as far as yeah, you have your team that you manage but i literally just bought a house maybe six seven weeks ago like we just learned about the watermelons going up and down our road that I don't know if I necessarily would have bought here, learned that. And the same place where they process all these watermelons, it's a gravel pit too. So I have semis and watermelon. <laughs> oh, beautiful. But, but um, yeah, so anyway, my, my point in that is I had my locations that I just managed and me and my wife and four kids, we've, we've literally been traveling the country the last five years, just overseeing yeah. with staff. You can do that if you have the skills of a business owner to manage people, then that's no problem to do that. Yeah. And then if you are doing it, other people's RVs is the way to go because you eliminate all your overhead. And no matter what's going on in the economy, if RVs just sit because it's a slow week or a slow month, they just sit. It, it's not costing you anything. You don't have the payments and insurance and all that stuff weighing over your head you don't have the maintenance you know so what's going on in the storage facility when you're, you're saying you're finding a storage facility so yeah like a storage facility that's a good what you want to do with these rvs that you're managing is you want to try to group them all in a central location so, so somebody's got to pay for that rental of that storage facility yeah that's going to be the rv owner yep because at the end of the day it's their rv so they're paying for the storage, they're paying for the payments, they're paying the insurance, the maintenance, all that overhead is their overhead to pay. And that's one of the beauties is, you know, you don't have a bunch of monthly overhead that you pay. As a franchise so RV sitting next to their house, they're not paying a storage fee. So if the RV sit next to their house and they're not paying a storage fee and they don't want to pay a storage fee, I just had this with the same guy I was telling you about Carson yesterday, he texted me about that. And I said, if, if they're balking about a storage fee, if they don't see all the value in the thousands of dollars a year, you're going to earn them, then just move on to the next person. That's not the ideal candidate for you. And okay. there's plenty of candidates out there to pick from. I know, I'm sure you see it. Um, thinking about this industry, I'm sure you see it as you're driving down the road, you see the RVs sitting outside people's houses. Well, storage units everywhere they're everywhere yeah so to build a fleet of about 25 rvs which is kind of like the ideal to do like a six-figure summer um well, that's kind of a good idea for a webinar six-figure summers <laughs> to do a six-figure summer that's about 25 units you can do that with and so to find 25 units when you probably have thousands of units within a you know 30 mile radius of you you know, it's, it's shooting fish in a barrel. Uh, but yeah, you do get those people that balk about those weird things and you just tell them, hey, sounds like you're not a good fit for the program and you move on. All right, I don't know if you heard that. There's commotion going on. 
wife and kids are getting ready to go. We got baseball. Oh, I heard something. No worries. Yeah. yeah. Base, I can wait a second. I'm just show. No, no, here. you're good. Okay. You're good. I just, I heard, I don't know how much these things pick up, whether it's just me. No, but there's we, also we homeschool four kids and we're always together. So that's normal life. For us. So, you know, yeah. The, the intriguing part of when you said you were traveling around with five kids in, a, in an RV, I'm like, man, that's for me to be able to break away. Cause we, I bought in, uh, I have a 22 class A, a 22 okay. class A that I want to be in right now going somewhere. Like, yeah. I don't want to be sitting here at my desk in my house, but that's not, that's not feasible right now. So this may be another step toward that. You know, I actually have my next class A hanging a picture next to me on the wall right here that I'm going to buy. Okay. I just have to figure out how I'm going to pay for it. Yeah. Yeah. This is definitely, you know, this is definitely a way to do that. Um, it gets a little tricky when you have drivables in the rental industry, because you've got to be really careful with your depreciation. You got to really take care of what you're charging per mile and what you're doing with that money as it's coming in. Um, that's, I learned that the hard way. I actually still haven't exited that problem that I created for myself on my first one in 2017 we bought an RV and started traveling the country it's got 120 something thousand miles on it I owe about 60,000 on it I probably made 120 grand on it rent it um you know because I had several RVs and we traveled one or the other but I wasn't paying down you know approximate to how I was renting it and adding the mileage so now and probably about 20 grand upside down on it because it has right. so many miles. So that's that's one. It's a fine balance. It can be done. We can show you how to do that as far as, you know, running a unit for about one to two seasons, about 30,000 miles, and then exiting it. Um, that definitely could be done. Or the cool thing about this business, too, what I started doing our last couple of years is I would just work on agreements with owners. So we went from Florida up to Michigan for four months last summer, and I just worked out an agreement with the owner. Like, literally, they were going to lose it to the bank. So they called us, hey, I'm losing this to the bank because we're just in a financial strait. I said, well, how about this? I'll just take over your payment for the next year, and then I can rent it or use it. So that's what I did. I was able to, so I paid the $900 payment a month. I traveled in it. I rented it out. And then when they were ready at the end of the year, I gave it back to them. They were good. They turned around, sold it, got out of it. And it allowed me to travel for four months. And, you know, so kind of a creative way to do that without necessarily me having all the responsibilities of owning it, you know? So yeah, there's clever ways. And like Matt and Christina in Arizona, they'll do one way rentals, which I could see that being popular in New Jersey because there's so much, surrounding you somebody could want to fly in jump in an rv go to you know whatever destination get in another um uh, airport and then go back to europe or wherever they came from well you just created yourself a family trip because they're paying you to bring that rv back to jersey so you get up get get to the rv bring it back make a little family trip you know have it last a week or two and so yeah there's fun creative ways to kind of get paid to travel you know when you do this well, if there's nothing else, it's it's a way to write off all my travel expenses as well. You get to, yeah, definitely lots of write-offs there uh, for that as well, yeah. So yeah. There was another um, webinar that wasn't in involved that you do that wasn't involved with franchise, and I, I'm not sure if I'm going to say this correctly, but there – there were two, are there two things that you do? You do the fireside franchises and then you do a coaching program as well? Yeah. So we have, it's called the RV rental business accelerator. Accelerator, that's it. Yeah. So that's our R3 program. So that would be a really good, uh, I can send you the link to that when we disconnect. So what that is, is that's a course. It's an eight module course on renting out your RV. We show you everything, you know, setting up the LLC to, getting the RV listed online to pictures, to documentation, to here's, you can use a couple of our software systems. We allow you to use. Um, and yeah, I think the, I believe the course right now, 
it's normally three grand. I think right now we're running a promo for like four ninety seven, and then you get a thirty day trial of our our membership program, which has the like the monthly coachings and all that kind of stuff inside of it. You get to use our contract launcher tool, which is a which is a um, you basically log you go to the back end of our website, you type in the renter's phone number and email, and it sends them a, a rental agreement outside of the platforms. That's very you know, in depth and protection so outside, outside of like outdoorsy or, or RV share or good Sam. Is that what you're yeah, talking about? Yeah. It's on top okay. of their rental agreement. That's built more for you than to protect the renter or outdoorsy. Um, you get that contract launcher tool. And then I think the way that works, it's typically 97 a month, but I think we're running a promo right now where it's 47 a month. And then you get the coaching, you get access to the software, that stuff. Yeah. Okay. So I, like I said, I don't know which direction I would go. I did. The LLC is already set up. The website's already set up. The Instagram is already set up. Mm -hmm. Merch is already here. So, and I don't, I tend to go full steam ahead when I start something. Yeah. So no, I, I hear the, you. The LLC, the YouTube, the Instagram, all in one night. Yeah. Yeah. You just crush it. Yeah. So yeah, it really just comes down to how fast you want to go and how far you want to go. You know, it's like if, Hey, you want to turn this into, uh, you know, an actual business, you know, um, then that would be the fireside opportunity. If you want to rent a couple RVs, get the write-offs, this and that, that would be the R3 program. So if you did, if I did a fireside franchise, would it have to be called fireside RV rentals? So we have a guy in Texas that signed up with us as Fireside and he's co-branding it with his name, which is Camp Easy. You know, that's kind of a goofy one as entrepreneurs, right? Because it's like you had your vision and your idea and your company name, your logo. Um, I don't necessarily have a problem with that. I just think there's a lot. Part of the value offer of Fireside is, you know, we're we're trademarked, we're the only franchise we're in we have almost 20 locations across the country we're you know have partnerships we're growing with koa care camps nascar i mean so it's brand recognition yeah there's so much branding there that you know if you didn't want to take advantage of that i mean that's definitely your call you know we have all the we take over all your social media for you we're putting blog posts up for you so you don't have to do any of that we're creating videos for you we're doing Instagram and Facebook for you. We handle your Google Maps listing. We're sending out, all, we handle all your email marketing for you. Like that's all part of the offer. Um, so literally you'd be taking all of that off the plate and just really getting our franchise support. Um, you know, one of the huge values that we have too. So like with our VShare, uh, you pay 25% commission. Are you on our VShare? Not yet. I'm on, the, I'm on Outdoorsy and and good Sam so far. Okay. Yeah. RV share. They're the, they're the industry leaders. They're, they're right. Airbnb of this industry. So you definitely want to get on there. Okay. Um, and RV share, they charge a 25% commission. Uh, I don't know a good Sam or outdoorsy charges. We don't, we, we haven't done good Sam just because we have so much business throughout outdoorsy and RV share. And we've been doing this so long now we have a database of tens of thousands of people that we're marketing to, you know, for our own rentals as well. So um, we just haven't done anything with Good Sam. I'm trying to, I was actually just at an event a couple of weeks ago where Marcus Limonis was there. Are you familiar with him? No. He's the founder of Camping World. Camping oh yeah, yeah, Mar oh, yeah, yeah. call yeah. Marcus. Yeah, that guy. <laughs> yeah, Marcus. Yeah. So I was at an event with him in September. I just went to an event with him. I'm trying to get next to the guy because I really feel like as here in the next couple of years, that's going to be a kind of a divine connection with him as far as working with him. But anyway, um, so RV share, they're the industry leaders by far. Um, one of the biggest bonuses of partnering with Fireside is uh, your platform fee, no matter where the booking comes through with us, it's 15% across the board. RV share is 50 or 25%. So we have corporate agreement with them. Um, so literally, if you were to go to RV Share on your own, and probably if you were to list on RV Share, about 60% of your bookings 
would end up coming from RV share, maybe even more. Uh, and so with our franchise fee of 9% and our platform fee of 15%, you're literally paying 1% less than you would pay RV share. Then you have all the value being with us. You know, and that's the other thing too. We have account managers with Outdoorsy. I spoke in that events uh, with Jeff Cavins, the founder of Outdoorsy and, and, you know, know him personally and, and, uh, and RV share as well. Like we have dedicated account reps. So when we have a situation, we don't get on to the chat, support this or that. We have dedicated account reps because we're their number one account, you know. Um, so yeah, you can definitely do the branding on your own. But to me, it's I feel like you wouldn't be getting all the value of what we offer. But I tell people, yeah, if you want to co-brand or do, I don't want to stop you from doing that. It just seems like really your energy would shift into really managing your team. Also, like on the management piece, when people fill out the management agreements, it's all through Fireside, right? And you also have access to all of our liability insurance and protection and coverage because we have separate policies outside of what the platforms offer to, to protect you and the owners on additionally. You know, so it might be confusing to owners like, okay, I see Fireside, but I also see this, you know, like what's the deal? But um, Justin in Texas is doing it. He's, he's co-branding and I'm not stopping him by any means. Right. Yeah, I'm not, my head is not made up or my mind is not made up either way, which is uh -huh. why, you know, I appreciate you taking this call because obviously there's so many things swirling around and in, in, up here in this thing. Yeah. That, uh, yeah. I got you, man. Yeah. I'm the same way, bro. <laughs> yeah. Notes everywhere. And, and, you know, yeah. whatever I'm reading that morning is telling me to do one thing. And then, so, so, uh, you know, information. That's why I got my team and my, that's why I have my team under me because I'm just the visionary. I throw out the, here's the goal. Here's where we're going. And then my team takes us there. <laughs> yeah, no, that's good. You're only as good as the people you surround yourself with, of course. Yeah. You know, yeah. Which is why I'm talking to you. Yeah. I mean, I've got, I actually have sold several of my businesses the last year. I sold almost 30, 30 around 30 real estate doors that I've owned. Um, just because I just, I turned 45 in June. And I was one of my mentors. Um, no, it's not even. Well, he's, I call him one of my mentors. You probably heard of Napoleon Hill. Think rich, grow rich. Of course, of course. Yeah. So I've been reading a lot on Napoleon Hill lately, and um, it really. I listen to him all the time too. He the way he okay. taught his deliveries. You know, I listen oh, to, yeah. uh, on Spotify. He's got it. There's a bunch of his archives on Spotify. Yeah. So, so his, one of his teachings lately, he said, once you hit 45. You actually, that's where you hit your genius in business, 45 to 60. And that really just kind of got me thinking like, yeah, I come up with a lot of cool ideas, but it, like in Tony Robbins and I've been- Tony says that. Lately too, where so focus the seasons. Goes, energy flows, right? And so I've literally been selling all my other business and all my energy is into Fireside, you know? So that's the goal is to, by 25, to make this an eight figure business. And we're the first- company to franchise with, you know, we're, this industry has only been around since 2013, really the peer to peer industry. Um, so we're just, we're leaps and bounds ahead of it. So it's just full steam ahead of this, you know? So anyway, long story short is it just comes down to what's your end goal, right? Which, you know, what's your end goal with this? I saw that you said, I think you maybe you said that when you, on the, on the uh, <clears throat> other meeting that you were a realtor. I have a real estate license. I saw that. Yeah, I was doing a little research on it. I saw that. Yep. And that I have a looks like your partner was, uh, partner with some gal. It said like her name and your name on a real estate website or something. Or... I own I own a uh, Diane's house. Is that might that might be what you saw? I own a company okay. called Diane's house. It's a recover. I own recovery houses. Oh, for, gotcha. For okay. Drug and alcohol recovery houses. So, okay. Um, you know, half a dozen of them. Okay. And, uh, you know, that's not, it's not something I'm going to retire on, but yeah. I own all the real estate too, but, uh, it's super rewarding. Yeah. The purpose behind it. Yeah, definitely. Totally. totally. Yeah. I mean, well, yeah, that's what it's Tony says, right? The two highest human needs are growth and contribution. Yeah. So that's, that's awesome, man. Yeah, what are you doing? How are you helping? Yeah, yeah, I get it. You know, I actually just quitted 
I just quit. My wife and I, we just quit drinking a couple months ago. Really? Um, it was kind of like the next thing, you know, we COVID, you know, anybody who drank probably drank a little too much during COVID, but <laughs> you know, we didn't do stupid stuff, right? Like we didn't go out and drink and drive or, you know, like we didn't do dumb things, but it was just kind of convicting me the last several months, like, Hey, to go to the next level in life and business and everything. That was the next thing to, to trim out. And so, yeah, we, um, it was really, it was, I, it's Tony Robbins who helped me quit because he said, we make change based on moving, um, avoiding pain or moving to pleasure. Like the number one reason we make change is to avoid pain or the number one reason we don't make change is to avoid pain. So like, I just started listing out all the downsides of drinking and I like rattled off like 30 of them. And, it, and just right then I'm like, all right, I'm done drinking. Literally. It's just was like that. It was crazy. It was like, yeah. That. Did you have, did you have a benefits column? Did you have a pro? You know, you I didn't, the, I really didn't because now we're starting to see the benefits, you know, right. like we're more focused on our health and exercise. And we're like, we're more checked into our kid, which, I mean, heck, how much more checked into your kids you think can you be? You literally travel the country with them and you homeschool and everything that we right. do. But no, we're like that much more intentional with our kids. And it's just, yeah, it's like that. I did it moving away from the pain. of, But then, yeah, then the benefit side kind of came on the opposite. Yeah, it was interesting. <laughs> yeah, I, I feel that. I feel that every day. Yeah. But I, but I also suffered extreme consequences. Mm. You no. Know, from, from my decision making years ago. I mean, it's been since I got sober in 2006. Okay. So a lot has changed since then. Wow. Yeah, that was some of my things. painful things I logged down was literally my aunt drank herself to death. I mean, it was funny as I'm sitting here thinking of these pain points, I'm like, why the heck didn't I not quit drinking earlier? Like it's super heavy in my family. My aunt drank herself to death. My mom, I helped she lived with me while I helped her get sober. And I remember going home one day and she's drinking. I'm laying on the driveway saying, yeah, if you leave, you're going to run me over and kill me. And I'm like, how come that didn't have me? But I guess right. it was because it was never a, a problem, right? It like didn't. Well, some people don't feel the consequences. Like I yeah. felt the consequences. I gratefully felt the consequences so that I was forced to change something. And um, there's people that go through their entire lives that don't feel the negative consequences that I felt and people that I know felt that were forced to change. And there's people that are missing out on so much pleasure in life and so much freedom yeah. in life because they don't feel the consequences to change. So I'm fortunate in, in that respect. Yeah, that's true. You know, you think of that, like, yeah, somebody where it's like a drunk, drunk, something happens where somebody gets hurt, then that is the pivotal point. Like, I guess I can thank God that, wow, I was, I did that before, you know, something that changed somebody's life forever happened sure yeah sure. and it can happen in an instant you know you oh yeah about it, hear about it every day Jeez. But yeah so that's what we do and it's it's funny that you we start talking about this too because I, i've had uh for the last like 24 or 48 hours i've had an idea to write about um camping sober okay for, dude that's for, a phenomenal idea for years um, especially when I was young, very young, my grandmother would bring me to her campground in her trailer and that's what they would do. They would sit around the fire and everybody, you know, beers, 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 beers. And, and oh uh, yeah. So that's what the, that's what, what camping was for me when I was younger. So I didn't, I didn't go back into camping again until I got sober. So, so now it's different. It's still everywhere around me. Yeah. Um, but there's always that, you know, it's like no shoes nation, you know, it was like, woo, let's go. And, and, yeah. uh, and that's what's not just, for me. Yeah. We literally like, um, camping, we've had some camping trips over the winter, um, that friends have gone on that. Um, so literally like with us just stopping drinking a couple months ago, like they our friends are planning out their camping trips for the summer and we're not at we haven't been invited to any of them. <laughs> you know, it's like, it. But then yeah. too, with us stopping drinking too, you know, like we're, we've gotten more involved in church and this and that. And so it's like, 
and these are our church, our friends from church too. So it's like, yeah, it's weird because like there's a separation happening. And my wife's like, yeah, they didn't invite us to the big Fourth of July camping and all that kind of stuff. And you know, they're doing us. They did a Cinco de Mayo party, you know, that we weren't invited to. And man, yeah, shout out to tacos. I know tacos is my favorite, man. Right. I have a taco right. tattoo right here that my six year old put on me the other day. Oh, that's great. <laughs> I actually have a cheesesteak tattooed on my arm. A what? A cheesesteak. Nice. <laughs> I've always wanted that, a tattoo and I've never gotten one for whatever reason. Yeah, I have a couple. But yeah, I like but, the idea for a book, man. That would be uh, that would be great. So I'm going to start making some notes of, about that, and um, you know, and I, I will I will come to a decision of how I'm going to move forward. And, uh, you know, I would love to have you as some kind of a partner because I need, uh, you know, I need help. So whether I do a fireside franchise or whether I do the RV, RBA. Three, yeah. Yeah. We were building a B3, which was business builder base camp. It was probably about 70% done for those that kind of like what you just said, well, do I need to take the fireside branding and and so we were trying to be all things to all people. And literally my partner and I just had a meeting yesterday and we totally scrapped the B3 because we were reading a book together called um, 10X is easier than 2X. I saw the you title know? on Amazon. Yeah, yeah. It, I, uh, it. I don't think it's actually released yet, but I was at a mastermind in Mexico last month and the author of the book was one of our speakers. So we all got a free copy. And he, um, it was really cool because, yeah, he's basically talking about like, you can actually 10X easier than 2X. And the way you do that is you actually eliminate things. So you know what your niche is, right? We're the franchise opportunity. Okay, what do we need to eliminate that's stopping us from focusing on the franchise? And so as we read that book together and thought of it, we're like, we don't need to be everything to everybody. Our main goal is Fireside Franchise. So like that, we actually even talked about the R3 that I was talking about. We actually talked about taking all that down too because, but we think it's a good lead generation tool. We can teach people and it helps the industry because a lot of people come in here, they rent their RV, the first rental, you know, somebody puts a scratch on the counter or something happens, they freak out. They take their RV down, they cancel all the bookings and it just kind of gives the industry a bad mark, you know? Um, so we thought, well, we'll leave that in place because it does help, you know, every, the industry as a whole, but for us, to, basically for us to train our competition, we're like, uh, the whole goal is to get people into the franchise. So somebody comes in, they take the R3 course, they see, oh, I get this. Oh, okay. I want to do more of this. And then we move them up the value ladder. But so, yeah, it's, uh, we're trying to figure out that balance, you know, I think I think it was Ed Milet. Do you do you ever listen to Ed Milet? Yeah, I'm going to a, a seminar of his uh, like next month. He'll, he's wow. going to be here in Florida. Wow. No, no, it, no, it got canceled. So any Ed Milet spoke in September, last September. I'm a uh, ClickFunnels. You heard of ClickFunnels? No. Okay, so check out Russell Bronson ClickFunnels. You'll you'll get lost going down that that hole. So anyway, it's All a right. whole marketing. It's a whole community. I'm I'm in their coaching program, one of their coaching programs. It's called the Lynchpin. Um, so Ed Milet spoke at their conference in September, and I I learned of him there. Um, and now I've been following him. I was signed up for a conference of his in he was gonna have a conference last month, but something happened with the promotion company that was putting it on and the event got canceled and we all got refunded. But but yeah, so I do follow him now. Close. He was just talking about, I forget who he was interviewing, but he was just talking about finding out who you are by eliminating wh who you're not. Mm. And, you know, that's addition by subtraction, like you were just talking about th with the 10X guy. I was like, well, I just heard that. And then he had, he just had this guy on, uh, he just had this guy on his podcast. So I bought the book and, and uh, it's, you know, I started a couple of days ago and, and, uh, yeah, he. I can't even believe like that's the guy from Dating Confused that wrote that. 
<laughs> oh man, if you like audiobooks, that get the audio version because it's Matthew kind of reading the right? book. Yeah, it's so cool. Well, 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 I'm reading it in his voice. You know, oh, yeah, when, yeah, right. as I'm reading it, it's him talking to me. Anyway. Yeah, it's him and Daisy confused reading it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Or, or, yeah, that is a good book. He just did he, a huge event with Tony Robbins. They did together. I, you know what I heard they were talking about Ed Milet when when Matthew McConaughey was on Ed show they were talking about doing that. Yeah, um, I gotta I gotta get the tape and and yeah. check it out. This there's only so, only so much time in a day. I know it's crazy. Isn't it? it is, but look, so I don't want to keep other business then. You said the, so. Um, so yeah. I have I have I have Di- Diane's house, which is managed by NUIT Management and Management Company. I have the real estate uh, license. I am also the technical director at the Delaware River Waterfront Corporation, which is six miles of waterfront. We have four venues down there. Um, and I have a construction company called Rip This Joint okay. LLC. Okay, I got you. So, you know, and I and I did that because I was, you know, because of the, the houses and it all just somehow it all melded together. But now that I'm getting uh, more focused sense. on spending time with my family out in a in an RV, and that's what I want to do. Um, I don't want to be pulled in 17 directions anymore. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. Man, I think that book would be a great tool for you. No matter, you know, with heading into the RV, wherever you're led into the RV industry, I think that book would be cool, man. Um, Yeah, I could see that being a cool tool and really a cool lead funnel too to, to, yeah, get people into. I mean, really, you could you could create a whole business around that. You could really off that book. You could create a whole business. You could create a, a community. That's where you go down the Russell Bronson trail, um, and then he shows you how to do that. And so, one of his, the not his saying, but one of his mentors saying is, if you don't have continuity, you don't have a business. So you know, you know, like Netflix is continuity and you know, the gym membership and the car wash, those are all continuity businesses. Um, my franchise is a continuity business. I get sure. a royalty monthly. But, and so everything, if it starts at continuity at the end, which basically our continuity, you know, is our franchise, but then it's in our community, right? We have all of our fire starters around the country and we're sharpening each other and building each other up and helping each other grow in business and personal and all these areas of life. Um, and so if you take that book, for instance, of, you know, uh, camping sober, which I'm, I'm huge into alliterations lately. So I'm trying to think of another, I'm trying to think of a C way to say that, you know, camping something, you know. Um, so if you had that, and that was a community really that, of right, people that are living the life of sobriety, what does that look like? Yeah, what does it look like camping? But what does it look like anywhere? What does it look like at a wedding? What does it look like at a, whatever, heck, what does it look like me hanging out with that, my friends from church that get drunk on the weekends? Yeah, telling, yeah. Camping, you know, hanging out. So that, that's the continuity side of it, right? This community of people come together and they get tools and resources and they're kind of this tribe culture, um, you know, which that's what we have on our, I don't know if you've been on our franchise website, but we have like our tribe and mantra and what's a fire starter you know our acrostic for that yeah i could see that book literally being like your lead funnel to get people like you could have like little articles off based off the book or yeah you know put or your email start, address in make the, for this free video compile articles into a book eventually yeah yeah yeah, Just yeah. To get it out of here yeah and when you do that um a good guy for that is um Jim, I'll have to think of his name, but he's part of the ClickFunnels, ClickFunnels Russell Bronson community. And he literally has software where it'll ask you questions, you answer the questions, and it will help you write the book. Wow. So it's, it's, and now he has AI incorporated into it, which is super cool. Um, yeah, I can't think of the name of it, but yeah, we use it for all of our content creation. One second, hold on. Want to some fish and cook it? Yeah, good idea. Um, what is his name? Jim something. 
anyway, I'll send it to you. But yeah, he teaches you how to do all that. Um, so yeah, I could see that book, literally a whole business being built right around that, you know. That would be cool. I'd almost, I see, this is where we get in trouble as entrepreneurs, man, right? Because I'm like, dude, I'll partner <laughs> with you on that, man. Let's right, do it, you know? Right. But then I'm like, I'm, but it does feed into what I'm doing. So I could actually see, and with my team that I have and stuff, we can literally knock that book out like days. I mean, with AI and chat GTP and, and Jim that I'm telling you about the software that we have, we can literally go on like YouTube, do some live conversations of you and I talking back and forth, transcribe that, put a framework around it. And in a week, we literally have a 150 page book. Wow. You know? Yeah. And then you no, just build cool. out from there, you know? But. So there's a whole culture already built around, like, or subcultures around, uh, like Grateful Dead shows or or yeah. fish shows. You know, um, even some of the metal shows, they got balloons, specific color balloons, and that's a safe area to gather. Um, yeah, there's not that in in you know you don't pull into a campground and find the yellow balloons in a campground. Yeah. So, yeah, that's a whole, yeah, and that's what people want. They are trying to find their tribe in life, right? Yeah. Like for Russell sure. Bronson, he is from he is famous for mailing a swag. Like I have a I literally just threw away a bunch um, because he mails us constantly. He's mailing us cuffs and t-shirts and hoodies and hats and this and that and all this stuff. And he was doing this years and years and years ago. And his his CPA is like, hey, you're spending like hundreds of thousand of dollars a month in swag. Like you might want to tame it down a little bit. And right when he was about to tell his team to do that, he gets a guy that comes on and leaves a testimonial that he had been signed up for ClickFunnels software for years and years. He's never canceled his membership because he got his t-shirts and he feels like that's his people. Even though he's not even interacting with the people, he's not even logging into the software using it. It gives them a sense of belonging. You right. know, and so that's a. Here, I'll show you this. Um, can you see this here? Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So these are his three books. Like literally, these are like the Bibles of marketing. So Expert Secrets is the book I'm talking to you about right now, and it's literally about creating your tribe, creating your mantra, creating your culture. Um, and that like that. So did you go into our? Yeah, you were in the webinar. So like that webinar that we did. That's Russell Bronson's script. It's called the perfect webinar script. Oh, and no literally, kidding. I log into the software. That's part of the ClickFunnels software I get. That's made by Jim that I can't think of his other name. <laughs> um, and I fill out this, this questionnaire. It takes you several hours because it's so many questions. And literally, I hit submit. And it pumps out a 200-slide perfect webinar script for me. So it's all about like, you know, starting with paint the vision, ask the question, tell a joke here, say this here, you know, like where we were saying, hey, you know, does that, does that sound like you? Does that resonate with you? Type this in the right. chat, you know, that's all very methodical, psychological. All scripted. Like, it's all scripted based on my framework of what I do. Um, and now I'll tell you this. Well, no, I, I probably shouldn't tell you this because I'm going to ask you if I can use this recording later. So I'll tell you this off camera, this little okay. marketing hack that we learned too. It's pretty cool. Okay. Anyway, so it's, yeah, that stuff gets me so excited, man. So um, yeah. let me see what That's time it, it is because I could literally sit on here for hours and talk about marketing and vision and making an impact on the world like that. That's just my jam. Yeah, it's quarter after five. I do. I have to get my son to baseball. For, okay. For yeah, I got it. Okay. I should have scheduled this. Had had I known, I would have scheduled it for earlier. Oh, yeah. Man, these things are so much fun. I could sit on here and talk for hours. Yeah, man. It's cool. It's cool. Especially when you have two driven people talking about ideas and being happy about it and not, you know, not competitive about it. Oh, you know, yeah. It's yeah. It's We're exciting. all going to succeed. And yeah, that's where I say in my webinar, like, yeah. If you get excited about purpose and passion and this and that, then you're my people. Let's talk, you know? Listen, a rising tide lifts all boats. Amen. There you, you go. Do, yeah. If you do well, I do well. We do well. 
Yeah, you know? exactly. And, like, and I want everybody to do well. Yeah. Like, I'm not wishing that the guy that's running the RVs down the street that he fails. I don't want that. I want that, yeah. you know? Yeah. See, that was our heart in a lot of the stuff we were creating. And then we're like, okay, we actually got to take it. Because we, our franchises started to kind of like, hey, what are you, like, what's Gar thinking? Where's Gar going? And they're starting to get a little like, so that's where like, okay, we really need to figure out like, yeah, we do want to help all people. And we do have these visions, but we got to take care of our tribe. You got to eat. Yeah, you have to eat for sure. For sure. A hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah. All right. I will absolutely reach out to you and email again and uh and uh figure out you know how we move forward. But okay. I really, really appreciate you taking the time to do this and meet with me and, and talk to me and uh share your experience with me. And I look forward to uh you know to the future. Yeah, me too, man. Good to talk to you. Enjoy watching your son play baseball and uh don't be like those crazy sports parents. Nah, that's not me, dude. <laughs> that's not me. Nope. <laughs> those guys nope. I'm gonna there. fall back. Thanks, Mark. <laughs> All right. Have a good night, bro. Take care, brother. Yeah, you too, man. Bye.